Yes. Morning, okay. everyone. Yes. Morning, everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another Business Development TV TT broadcast. Today is about how to tell your story and how you can sell more because you know how to tell your story and how to find your story. You see our guest? You see what she has on her shirt? Visibility is power. And that's what your story does. Your story makes you just pop out of, you know, just pop. Anyway, so coaches and mentors today, and in fact, for the last 10 years, maybe more, because that's when I started paying attention to them, mm -hmm. have been pushing their students to tell their story. The truth will set you free. It is true. It works. It works. It works. Many tell their stories, they record their story while they're on a live broadcast. Facebook gave us that live broadcast a couple of years ago, five, maybe seven. It's true, it works. Many tell their stories, they record their story, and while they're recording their story and in front of the whole of Facebook Live, they break down. They share their breakthrough, they share what's working for them and why it's working for them and then invite you to join them on their journey, invite you to tell your story as well. It works, it works, it works. But what if, what if you prefer to keep your emotions to yourself? What if my, I prefer to keep my family life private? What if my business struggles I wish to keep it as my private story. What if my product is boring? You know, or my story is boring. Oh, I so don't have say. this massive breakthrough. I'm just a businessman who just does this, does this, does this. It's boring. So do I tell a boring story? Well, uh, on today's TV, business development TV broadcast, we may not exactly answer to your scenario. We may not exactly find the key to unlock that story that's hidden deep, deep inside of you. But we just may. We just may. It's up to you. We're inviting you to start your journey. We're inviting you to know how to tell your story to the world. But keep what you want private, you can keep it private. What you, we want to tell you what your audience needs to know so that you can connect with them and resonate with them. And therefore, you help them. And in you helping them, that line truly comes true. When you help other people, you help yourself. The COVID era is upon us. All right. There was this one card game I used to play with my kids. And I only had to do it once with my first child. And I was going to get a card deck to demonstrate, but anyway. <laughs> um, it's called Pick Up 52. All right. You shuffle the deck, you shuffle the deck, you shuffle the deck, and then you do, and it's all over the floor. And we bought Pick Up 52, and each other goes, <laughs> seriously? <laughs> um, you only have to do it once, and they learn. Now she tried doing that with her siblings and, and some learned and some just went sh straight over their head and some got angry. It's the same thing with your story. It only resonates with those who are looking for your story and who is going to connect with your story. So the, with the COVID era being upon us, do you want to be the first card to be picked up? That's what I'm inviting you to, be, to do today. Be the first card that's going to be picked up. And how are you going to do that? By learning how to tell your story. So with that, I invite you to lean in, listen up, turn off all distractions, because we have a serious business development tips for you today. Indeed. And our guest, all right, is none other than Miss Roshonda Pratt, also known online as The Rose Show. Bernie, how do you say it? Yes. Roche. 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 <laughs> Roche. All right. She is a live storyteller and live video video strategist, producer, and the first lady of visibility. She empowers brands to be seen, heard, and paid on air and online through multimedia. 
she helps her clients find their voice. So if you're mm -hmm. looking for your voice, you can't figure out your voice. All right. She's here to help you find that voice. Clarify your message, right? Yes. And, and also on her Monday night Facebook show, um, Media Monday with the Rochelle. All right. She helps, helps you find that voice. She has a TV background and some other backgrounds that we're going to um, let out the bag just now. Um, in front and behind the camera scenes, a television news producer for 20 years. She has contributed to CBS's The Talk, all right, um, the Tamron Hall Show, and she's currently has a monthly segment on the Charlotte Fox News affiliate. And most importantly, she's a woman of Trinidad and Tobago. So welcome, Roshanda. Welcome. Hi. Where is, is Roshanda right now? She is in Columbia, South Carolina. All right. We love it. And we I just it. want to say for the record here, there is a big, a huge delegate of the West Indian culture here in South Carolina. So I'm going to go ahead and say on record, do not let this Yankee voice fool you. I have grown up <laughs> off of curry chicken, dumplings, saltfish, cassava, plantains, the whole nine. So don't let this accent fool you. Trini is in my veins. <laughs> we, don't get, we don't let that up so easily. Exactly. Yes. We don't. Oh, my goodness. So... Rashonda, thank you for joining us today. And one thing I'd love to find out, how have you, or how did you develop mm -hmm. this passion for storytelling? Where did it come from? Really, it came from my West Indian grandmother. My dad's mother, um, affectionately called Danan, was a masterful storyteller to the point that sometimes growing up when she would tell stories, I would go to my dad and say, Donna just told me this story. Is this true? There's no way. Like she would act out all the accents and her stories were just so vivid and vibrant. I was just like, wow. And my dad up to this day, he, you know, he's always the life of the party because he could always tell very passionate stories. And so it really started on a journey with my grandmother. And then when I was in the fourth grade, my dad would make me watch the news. And um, he really started my journey in becoming a journalist because in the fourth grade, he told me that as an American citizen, it was my duty and responsibility to know what was going on in my country and my community. And he challenged me and said, I should know more about your country than you do. So while my friends were watching the Smurfs, I was watching Tom Brokaw, Peter Jennings. I always ace current events in school because I was the kid that was watching the news. And if you go to my parents' house today, my dad still has it on CNN, MSNBC. He is still one of the most well-informed people I know about politics and all things going on in the news. And he really started this and this love of storytelling from that aspect. And um, the, the wonderful thing that I love about stories is it's really in our DNA since the beginning of time, we've all been trying to find out the story of how did we get here? The story of our life's journey and experiences. And stories really help us. And what I've learned in telling stories for 20 years as a television news um, TV producer is that stories allow us to connect to people. Stories help us to understand things and stories prompt action. So if you're not telling the story of your company and your business, you're probably not getting the action that you want people to do. So action, whether they sign up with you in a strategy session, whether they buy your product or your service, uh, go visit your website, whatever you want them to do, because we have to understand that the story or quote our why, which is the part of the, the major part of the story, is the North Star that directs every single thing that we do. Your story and the why of your story directs everything that you do. Okay, that's, that's true, very true. You know, I would like to, the, your business story, and you know, a lot of people stumble over, as, as Bernie said in the beginning there, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes as a business person, you're trapped like, how does my 
business story fit in with what I want on a professional website or a professional page? Right. How do you how do you do that? How do you tie that in? So a lot of times people want to come and treat their business like a machine, like it's just something obsolete over there. But what we have learned in marketing, and I know that you can attest to this, Hillary, is that people want to be able to make a human connection with other people. That's why over the years we have seen the tide turn when it comes to marketing and even companies, big brands, getting more into storytelling. Why? Because they want to humanize their brand. I mean, perfect example that before Mm COVID-19, but definitely not during COVID-19, we have seen Facebook do more advertisements on television than ever before. And what are they advertising? Communities. They're advertising group pages because they want people to understand that we want you to be connected to a community. So they're doing their part in telling stories of these different communities and groups that you can find on Facebook. So one of the main things that we have to do as entrepreneurs, business owners, companies and corporations, and even brands, is humanize our brand. And that goes back to the story. That goes back to identifying your story and how it connects to the people that you're called to serve and impact. Because facts tell, but stories sell every single time. And so we have to make sure that there's a synergy between our company story and the story of the people that we ultimately want to serve. Can you say that one more time? Which part? Facts. The facts tell. Tell. Yeah. The facts tell. That's a lot of information. Nonprofit organizations do that all the time. 70% of our clients have seen this. One out of three people have done this. And all of those numbers are great. But the power of stories is stories helps you to quantify what those numbers mean. So facts tell. They do. But it's the story that sells. People have to see themselves inside of that story. So I'm going to do something really quick. We're going to go off the cuff here a little bit. So Hillary, I'm going to flip the table here. Hillary and Bernadette, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Ladies, can you tell me what is your favorite movie? Sound of Music. Sound of Music. Okay. Bernadette? You mute. Let me unmute you. Unmute. Unmute. <laughs> The intern. The intern. <laughs> the intern. I love it. I okay. Love it. Yes. So we're gonna start with you, Bernadette. Tell <laughs> me why you like the intern. Uh, because people have thrown the baby out with the bathwater when they want to create their culture. And and to me, dressing up, well, not necessarily you, <laughs> but people <laughs> go to work and dirty, ripped up, you know, washed out t-shirts. And yes, mm-hmm. you want to be free. You want to be free of the tie and the shirt that's squeezing. But there is some level of, you know, you know there's a reason why that the tie worked for so long. And, and, and the other thing that, that I um, constantly fight is um, the, the, the part where children call their parents by their first name. Mm-hmm. That I, I cannot deal with it. <laughs> okay. So that's okay. throwing the baby out with the bathwater and the intern hit that home for me. I love that. I'm going to explain to you. We're going to go a little bit deeper into that. So Hillary, tell me why you like the sound of music. Why you like that movie? Well, I love this for the music. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, and the, it was really the music that first got me, but then the mm-hmm. whole family and everything about the family um, being together, family, trying to get over their struggles. And even there's a very specific part where it really demonstrates family in that Lisa, she had to choose between mm-hmm. a boyfriend and the family. And she chose her family. And I love that. Yes. You know? Right. <laughs> so here's what I would submit about the power of storytelling. Here's my case study. Somewhere in your DNA somewhere in your story and Bernadette, especially for you, because you passionately communicated why you like the movie, the intern. It's Mm -hmm. because you have a connection to that movie. 
I don't mm-hmm. know you, but I would dare say that you are very much a person who wants people to understand the rules of engagement and govern themselves accordingly. Like you, mm. you are very much like, okay, this is the protocol. This is how you conduct yourself in business. This is how you conduct yourself in life. Hillary, you know Bernadette. Is what I'm saying true about her? And that's why that movie resonate yes. with you. Hillary, you're very much connected to your family. And so that's why that movie resonates with you because of your own family connection. So if I was to answer that story, the movie that I love and I still have it on VHS do not judge me, is the movie Beaches. I'm like, some people are just like, what is a VHS? Just do a Google search. <laughs> but the I movie, know, sorry, yeah, what mommy, mommy. like, what's a VHS? But the movie Beaches, I love, because I love the story and journey of these women and their sisterhood and the journey that their relationship goes through. And I've experienced that in my own relationships with some of my best girlfriends. And so I love the power of that story because on the inside of my DNA, that really resonates with me. Now, the business owners who are watching, because I see you guys in the stream, and many of you are just saying, well, why is Rashonda here talking to these ladies about their favorite movie? What does that have to deal with, do with anything? Everything. Because if we can understand what draws us to our favorite movie, we have to understand what draws the people that were called to serve at impact to what can become their favorite business, right? We have Very to understand much. how that draws people and how to make that connection. And that's why the story really is the foundation to every single thing that we do. It's the foundation to your website copy. It's the foundation to your sales page. It's the foundation to what you say on live video. It's the foundation to um, your social media and what you post. It's the foundation to um, how you bring on brand ambassadors and how you have your uh, team to have buy-in. The story is paramount to everything that we do. And, and that actually brings a question to me in the sense that the business want to keep their perfect, they want to keep their professional front because mm-hmm. that's what old media allowed us to do. Right. You, you're allowed to put out this, this, this front to mm-hmm. tell you this is your brand, this is what you stand for. But then... If they want to reach out and connect with the generation X, generation Z, generation UVR, um, mm-hmm. they look towards influencers. You know, does that make sense? If me, the company, mm-hmm. is not moving in terms of my professional brand and my professional outlook, and I pay these influencers to connect my brand to people. How does that make sense? Sure. So I think what it is, is understanding that um, in building a brand story, it's having partnerships and having people that have buy-in. Um, often tell people that it's one voice, but many echoes. So the CEO, um, the person who's leading the company should definitely be the person who's helping to craft and mold the story. And then sharing that and molding that to the other people who are a part of the company. Now, understanding about having influencers and people who are coming in to your company, they need to have the same understanding and the same buy into the story. Because one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to confuse the narrative. Because if you confuse the narrative, confused people do nothing. They won't buy from you. They won't follow you because they're just like, one day you're telling us this one thing and then the next day you're saying something else. So that's why we have to, as business owners, control the narrative. Mm -hmm. We can't give that over to someone else and we can't assume that people know and be okay with recreating or disrupting the narrative that's in our company. So when I first came on the scene as a storyteller strategist, people thought I was the person that was going to help them write their book. And I said, nope, that's not what a storyteller strategist is. And that's before we really got into storytelling. And being an innovator and a disruptor, I got an opportunity to define what the brand story is. And constantly being before people telling that same narrative over and over and over again. So now people understand what a storyteller strategist is. 
But if I just hand it up over to people to say, oh, well, they just figure it out, then that means I'm giving people who don't have a buy into my company the opportunity to manage a narrative that they shouldn't have to manage. Does that make sense? That makes yeah. total sense. So then the next question is, um, as you're saying, the, the company needs to own the narrative, right? Yes. That's very correct. Now, if I see a person out there who's on Instagram, I want to launch my brand on Instagram, and that person has 20,000 followers. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how that person got their 20,000 followers because Instagram and Twitter were one of the places where you see a lot of people buying followers. Sure. Right? So I don't know how that person got their 20,000, but I want to get in front of that 20,000. Now, the narrative that I'm holding for my company mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily connect with that um, influencer who has 20,000. Um, how do you tell a company like that that that, that influencer is not the person that's <laughs> going to do them any good. I so often good tell that to you're confusing the narrative. I love that. And I tell people just like I tell them when it comes to media placement, I do a lot of media training and helping people to get booked on media. And this is what I tell them. All media is not good media. <laughs> I love it. Just because you have the option to do it, it doesn't <clears throat> mean that you should. Let me lean in and say that one more time for the people who are in the back of the room. All media <laughs> is not good media. And sometimes people are just looking for to put those things on their website, house on NBC, um, be able to shout those things out. But why compromise your brand, the integrity, the character of your company, just to get before someone who has 20,000 followers? It's not worth it because the payoff in the end is not gonna be great. There needs to be, when we're hiring influencers, brand ambassadors, even employees, there needs to be something on the inside that it has a fit. There's the same philosophy. I think about um, uh, Chick-fil-A. And um, Chick-fil-A here in the States does a really good job of, they don't allow any and everybody to open up a franchise. They don't. Yeah, Mm -hmm. they, they go through a screening process. There is because we have to make sure that you are right fit for the brand. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. again, we as, as business owners have to be able to do the same and be willing to do the same. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure. That's for sure. Great question. <laughs> um, in, in our world in Toronto, Tobago, um, I don't know if you're looking on our local television uh, at mm -hmm. all, um, but especially when it comes around the carnival, um, how, oh, how, yeah. does it, <laughs> how does it make sense that a, 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 a telecom company uses a singer to be their brand ambassador? How do you see that? You know, I think sometimes what we do, and we see companies in the States that do this as well. Okay, I think it goes, good. Yeah, so <laughs> you're not alone. I think it goes back to this whole thought of, I want to get the person who has the most eyeballs. Because remember I said, those who have the eyeballs have the wallet, right? But we have to understand, okay, what's the responsibility to that? Is there really a synergy? Does this really work? for our brand. What is going to be the outcome on the other side of this? And I think this goes back to why it's so important for us to have key people at the table who can say, this is not a good idea and this is not what you want to do. Let's think this through. Though this may seem like a good thing to do now, what is going to be the backlash or what's going to be the, on the other side of this? And does this really ultimately align with our company values and the story that we want to portray? Just because it glitters and just because everybody else is telling that story, that doesn't mean that's a narrative that you need to hitch on to. I mean, we're very much in a culture of people who are really looking for a disruption, who are looking for a new narrative 
mm. and looking for a new story. Mm. And if we're just following the Pied Piper, we all know how that story ends. Yes. You know, you <laughs> leave the kids out of the village and you never see them again. And yeah. we have to be careful about how we're leading our people through our storytelling. Storytelling is very intentional. It's not just something you just throw to a wall and say, okay, we're just going to try this and see if it sticks. We're going to try this and see if it sticks. No, it's a process. Even when I'm working with companies and telling their story, I mean, this can go over the course of several days or even several hours in pulling back the, the, the onion layers the onion in order layers. to get to the center of what you really want to portray to people and what you really want them to experience. Because storytelling and branding, much of the same. Branding is what people say about you, not what you tell them. <laughs> it's really what they say about you. And then you can go back and say, look at what they say and say to yourself, they get it. We're doing this correctly. You know, I, I meet parents sometimes who kids, you know, I'm known online as the Row Show Live. And I meet adults and even kids who call me the Row Show. Don't even know my real name. They're just like, what? It's the Row Show. They're like, sorry, I don't even know your real name. I just know you as the Row Show. And I don't get offended by that because that means the story we're telling is working. working. <clears throat> That's great. I know my mom went through the really big task of picking up this name out of a jet magazine, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> true story. That's where my name came from. <laughs> true story. You see stories. I just, I just <laughs> about the stories. <laughs> but I love the fact that they're picking up on the story that you ready for this, that we are selling. Facts tell, but stories, stories sell. sell. And that's what story, that's what people buy right. every time. I don't know if right. um, so I kind of, uh, I like that. You see for the, and coming into the, uh, Bernie, I don't know if you reveal this as yet, but the month of May, we're going to be talking a lot about websites, right? Mm -hmm. And We've gone through the area of websites being flyers, websites being a phone book with too much stuff. What storytelling, so based on your storytelling mm. um, experience, expertise, how do you apply your stories now to those who are trying to build their websites and tell your story sure, on the website? So number one, telling your story on the website goes back to that human connection. I think sometimes we treat websites as just a static thing, just a placeholder. In case our social media crash, we can still send people to our website. That's where people go to get their free download. That's where they go to schedule their complimentary session. We treat it as a one-off thing. It's just it's just like the wallpaper. It's over there and we pick it up every now and then when we have to renew our domain and renew our, our hosting. But really that should be the place where from your social media, the story continues. So when people go to your website, they should still see a continuation of a story. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this to, to my folks who have an about page. I mean, for all that is right in the world, can we make that about page about a story? I mean, some people literally copy and paste their resume over there. And I'm thinking like, I gotta read this. I'm still reading, still scrolling, still reading. Like, make it interesting. It's almost like, I know we're talking about websites, but I'm gonna just put this in here. It's almost like headshots and, and brand photos. Yes, everyone should have a standard branded headshot. When you're going to speak somewhere, you have the headshot. But I also think that people should see your personality. People should see that, you know, you're with your kids. You're the marketing mom, you know. People should see you in your office. People should see your personality coming through because that's a part of storytelling. See how it even goes to your pictures? So the story, we don't treat our website just as a placeholder, but we, we, treat it, we treat it as an extension of our story. And we should see the story part woven through the website. Um, from case studies, case studies on your website, mm -hmm. showing the work that you've done for clients, but you treat it like a case study. 
um, looking at your about page and thinking about how can I bring people into my world and, and have them understand who I am and, and what separates you and makes you different. Now, I know this is sometimes uncomfortable for people who are um, very much, I'm a CEO, I'm the boss. I, I don't, yeah, you know, I don't, it, we're distant from each other. But as my shirt says, visibility is power. And listen to this, transparency is the new currency. And if you want to build the know, like, and trust factor, you need to understand, Mr. CEO, Mrs. CEO, CFO, COO, you need to understand that we better be on the front lines of telling our narrative so people can understand exactly who we are, what we do, what drives our company values, and how that aligns with their value. I am a fan of Chick-fil-A. I cannot tell you there is not a week that doesn't go by. I will probably have Chick-fil-A today that I don't go to Chick-fil-A. Why? First of all, I love their values. I love their customer service. I'm a mom of three, 12, nine, and two. I walk in there. I feel like I just want an Emmy. I feel like a rock star because they're just like, how are you? It's my pleasure. They're helping me get the kids situated. They're taking the food to the table. It's a value and experience. And I've traveled all over the U.S. and I've eaten at several Chick-fil-A's in different cities. And guess what? I experienced the same story. See that? The same story throughout. No matter if I was in the Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, the one in South Carolina, the one in, I'm trying to think of the other one I went to, the one in North Carolina, it's been the same story experience. The experience is also stories too, because you share that experience, you tell that to someone else. So look at your story on your website as an experience. What do I want people to have when they come here? What do I want them to experience? I hope that answers your question. That's, yeah, that's definitely that perfect. That's perfect. perfect answer. Yes. <laughs> I want you to speak to the entrepreneur. You yes. touched on it very, very yeah, briefly. <laughs> and the question I want you to answer for the entrepreneur and the business owner of, let's say, one to three employees, how can they peel back their onions to reveal the story? And most importantly, to keep the story because they're the ones who innovate, uh, break right. through, they want to get the market, they break into the market, they have their customers, and then they adopt the big business story of don't talk to me. Right. I think it goes back to um, remembering your why. Why did we start this company? Why did we start this product or service? Going back to the thought of what is our why and when is the last time we really engaged with this why? Are we living up to what we said that we wanted to do or why we wanted to start this? And sometimes that means we need to go back through a rebrand process or we need to go back to the basics. I think people forget about the basics as an entrepreneur. And if COVID-19 hasn't taught me anything, it's like the basics. So I remember when my, I'm, I'm broadcasting live with you guys here. I do a lot of live streaming and my Mac, crashed yeah. like everything is on this mac computer and i was like I, I thought that it was it felt like a bad breakup i had to go take it to the store and they told me you have to check this thing in because there was something going on with my camera screen and it was cloudy and i can't do live video and tell people i'm the lady first lady of visibility and they can't see me and i was sitting going like well how long do you have to keep it and my husband's like talking to him and they said, you know, they got to ship it off somewhere possibly and it's in maybe a couple of days. And I'm like, oh. and I, I canceled Monday night show. I just was like, I can't do it. I just, I can't. And I was talking to my friend and she said, well, how did you first start doing live video? I was like, on my phone. And she was like, well, you still have a phone tripod, don't you? And I said, yeah, but I don't do shows like that anymore. And she was like, wait, what? And it was so funny was, I, um, I had to go live that week and I was just like, I didn't have my Mac. And I said, well, I guess we're going to go back to the basics. So I pulled out my phone here and I set up my, set up the tripod and 
put the phone up and I'm, I'm doing my live video and I'm saying to myself, this is where you started. <laughs> Before all the fancy stuff, all you had was a phone and it worked just fine. That's how you built this thing by doing the basics. And it was, I mean, that live video was amazing. We had so much engagement and so many people. And I was like, this is just the basics. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in the work of it that we forget the basics. And the basic is what, why are we doing this? Because that's what people buy. The why, not the how. Beautiful, exactly. beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I can't say any more beautiful than that. Thank um, you. you. You have spoken to my heart. Um, Hillary and I uh, speak this more or less every day. And this is the reason why we are doing this and showing up every Thursday. So we have um, started our journey in January and we're like, you know, Hillary, we need to do this. We need mm -hmm. to go out there and tell business owners it. and tell entrepreneurs, it's not about the front. Okay, right. It's not what you're telling people to think about you. It's you it's connecting you. with them, you telling your story, you loving your story, embrace your mistakes, embrace the dramas of life. Yes. Can I talk about that right second? We didn't sure. talk about that. Bernadette, let me tell you something. A part of your message contains the word mess. <laughs> M-E-S-S. -S. I love it. I love it. I when love I discovered it. that, I said, well, that takes off a lot of pressure. you like, <laughs> mess is a part of the message. And we do a disservice to people when we say, I mean, most people who invent something, they're inventing it because they want to solve it. They want to solve the mess. So we do a disservice to people when we don't talk about the mess of our journey. We don't talk about those experiences because that very much makes up the story. I mean, think about it. Think about it. All of us love a comeback story, right? Mm -hmm. Some of yes. the best movies are the ones. That's why we where, watch movies. That's why we watch movies. The person, there's a conflict and hopefully at the <laughs> end, unless there's a sequel, there is some kind of resolution. I mean, I think about um, a popular movie that's been playing here in the U.S. on Hulu, Little Fires Everywhere. Oh, my goodness. This series had me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, my gosh, when's the next one dropping? <laughs> I mean, there's like community time because there's so much conflict in these characters. And then the resolution that comes, there's a lot of mess in that story. And so when you're embracing your message, also embrace the mess. Because nobody wants to deal with someone who is perfect. They want people who are progressing towards somewhere. So perfection is not in the case of storytelling. It's about showing your progress and your natural journey of getting to where you're going. I love it. I love it. I love it. And because our content was so great, um, we are way over time. <laughs> longer than most times but i mean i just couldn't stop you the, the stuff was just you know it was just thank coming. you coming. great thank wonderful you ladies stuff. so thank much you. For I, this opportunity. I am so happy yes that you and were able to take time out of your lovely busy life with your lovely three children um and share your wonderful thoughts with us trini living in north carolina love it yes north carolina did i get that south right carolina. South, south, south carolina, carolina. Yes. you're in south yes. carolina and I want all my island people to know this. This is my parting words. Visibility is power is not an American message. It's a global message. Visibility is power goes beyond your zip code, your area code, and even your island where you're located because you deserve to be seen, heard, and paid. Thank Love you. It. Thank you, ladies. That's Bye -bye, our wrap. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye. Oh.